Sony just revealed the inside of the PS5, but here's what it tells us about Xbox. As we head towards the next generation consoles launch, which are going to be happening in November, and depending on you know which console you're buying, it's a slightly different date, but middle of November for both consoles, they will be revealed. And today, Sony is talking about, or quite literally showing us, the inside of the PlayStation 5 console. Now, if you want to take a look at that video, which I think is worth watching, you can find a link down in the description below that will take you to that. But there's a couple things that we can take away from this teardown that they did that tell us a little bit more about the Xbox, especially when it comes to the heating and cooling of the console. But first, we're going to kick it off here with the stand because this is sort of an interesting thing, right? The PlayStation 5 has a stand, but if you want to change the orientation, you're going to need a screwdriver. And this isn't the most elegant solution, but Sony has done a good job of making it relatively easy. You can see there, the first thing you have to do is take a screw out to pull off the stand because it's going to be securely attached. And then you can also store that screw right into that little housing. But there's also a little cap, which is very convenient, which you can put into the bottom of the console to keep that port nice and clean. Now, this does rotate to keep that bolt nice and secure so that it's not going to fall out. And that is really t relatively well thought out. And so there you can see, you can just attach it to the back through a nice little clip mechanism. And there you go. You can then rotate the console. Now, that is not a bad solution, but obviously the Xbox Series X, you can just be upright and you can just knock it over and it just fall. Well, you don't want to knock it over, but it can just be laying on its side and you don't need a screwdriver or anything else like that. And let's be honest, that is much easier than having to unscrew the bottom of that uh, little stand. Now, that being said, let's just be honest. Most people are only going to set up their orientation of their console once. They're going to set it there and forget it. Just set it and forget it and that's it and that's the way it's going to be done and so while moving it up and down is going to be it could a little bit more cumbersome with the playstation 5 i don't it's not that big of a deal at the end of the day and so moving on here uh, one of the other interesting things too is look how easy it is to pop the sides of the console off here now he does put a little effort into it but you can see they do pop off relatively easy it doesn't look like there's any screw mechanisms here and again this other side pops off just as easy that is pretty simple and realistically makes me believe pretty firmly, honestly, is that we are going to see some exterior shells that Sony is going to offer to allow you to customize your PlayStation. If they don't, I think that's a really missed opportunity considering how easy those things just pop off. But Microsoft did this with the Xbox 360, if you remember, the face plates. I don't know if Sony's going completely that route, but the way that they have designed the console that is shown there makes it really really plausible that they are going to do that and if they're not it is going to make it very easy to pull those things off and do some custom paint jobs or put some lettering or stickers or whatever else you really your heart desires uh, onto your playstation 5 you can do that but the one thing that we can really take away from the playstation 5 teardown is the cooling situation i mean look at this heat sink that sony has included in the playstation 5 it is jimumbus. It is massive. It is huge in all regards. They are taking cooling very seriously. No surprise. I mean, Microsoft is too. But I mean, just look how large this thing is. It takes up a sizable portion of the console and realistically kind of shows why the console is so big is because, I mean, just look at that. It's probably like 30% of the console is probably just copper uh, heat sink. Now, one of the interesting things here is that you can compare and contrast this. This is the heat sink on the Xbox Series X. Uh, thank you to Digital Foundry who provided these images and you can see how large it is there. I mean, it is sizable. And if you get a nice profile shot here, you can see the design language that Microsoft went with when deciding the cooling, right? You have your massive heat sink and look on both sides. There's nice cavities to improve airflow. Effectively, what you have is an air, one fan that is going to be pushing uh, or pulling cool air in and pushing hot air out. That is the design that they've gone with. And so it'll be interesting to see how both consoles run from a noise perspective. I think the PlayStation does get a little bit loud sometimes although candidly so does the xbox one i've heard my fans ramp up and so that's you know that both consoles can be loud both consoles are both using by the way amd zen 2 chips which based on what amd is showing here and what microsoft is showing here must be running very very warm and don't forget the gpu is also from amd and so that could be running very hot as well so the cooling solutions are very elaborate here and i think it's kind of hilarious how big they are on both consoles but sony's obviously is quite a bit larger which means does microsoft have an in 
inferior design? I don't think so. I think it's just two different options here because Microsoft built their console. It's quite literally just a rectangle with a fan, which has really good airflow. That is the design. That is the choice that they made. And so Sony obviously is going for a slightly more, you know, architectural design. It's got some curves and everything else. So they need a little bit more of a custom heat sink set up there uh, that makes sure it wraps and touches all the components. But again, it realistically is just talking about, hey, these consoles are going to be warm. There's no doubt about it. And both companies have put a lot of effort into their next generation cooling because obviously they don't want red rings of death. They don't want really high, loud fan noise and everything else. So this is just sort of a quick kind of breakdown of the video that Sony released. I think it's, I think their console is going to do fine. I think it's an interesting design. Microsoft obviously went for the very simplistic design with maximum cooling efficiency. Sony went for the more architectural, you know, kind of curvy design with their own custom, you know, really, really custom design. Uh, layout for the cooling not that microsoft's isn't custom but sony's had to like bob and weave through on through all those different uh, components anyways i digress that is just an inside look at what the playstation 5 is looking like it's an interesting look their pcb is pretty large as well not that Microsoft isn't, but Microsoft went with the split PCB design. So it's just a different look at how both companies are approaching the next generation consoles. They're they're both aiming for the same goal, right? High performance, high, high frame rate, and all of that. But they put, both took very different paths to get there. And I just find it fascinating that Sony went one route, Microsoft went with the other. And in November, we should know who did it better.